Oh, hello. I'm the old school DM. I'm a paper crafter for role playing games. I make buildings, minis, and props. Today's episode is going to be about a mod to your building process to make your objects, your buildings specifically, store in much less space. Um, this is a partially porn, uh, version of something partially pioneered by Fat Dragon Games with their full flat system. Uh, this is a box I have holding four two-story buildings, all folded flat. This technique was also improved uh, later by Mystic Mountains Productions with their vault and other buildings, which I love building. Uh, I'm going to show you how their improvements are the basis of what I'm looking at doing right now. Uh, the general idea of fold flat is instead of gluing things together, they hold together with friction. Uh, and it's primary a tab and slot model. And uh, I'll show you two of the tabs and slot model portions from the vault by Mystic Mountain Productions. Uh, this is the base. And the first tab and slot I want to show you is where you just literally glue the base tile to something, cardstock, foam, uh, whatever you like, I like, mat board. Uh, and then the glue tabs are smaller. You cut them down, they, are, they come smaller. And then you slip them in to the floor like that. Uh, to glue the horizontal things together, to where normally you would glue a tab in here, what you'll see is the tab, instead of gluing to the other wall, is gluing back on itself only in the corners in this little slot, making a little slot for the tab. So those will go together just like that. Slide those in. That's the basic mechanic. You look also, there's a slot here for attaching roofs. It's a very, very simple mechanic and very, very elegant. Um, I like to do some other things. Uh, this requires a lot of setup and if doesn't really work on older kits that, uh, that haven't done this innovation. Um, so I'm going to show you how I did this recently with this kit, Frontier House by Dave Graffin Games, uh, model, or Dave Graffin Models. I like a lot of the models uh, Dave has. They're often very simple, uh, but they take up a lot of space. Uh, and they're all glue, glue tabs. So let me show you what I've done. This is the meat of the episode. So again, the simplest thing is to take the tile and glue it down. When you glue it down, you're very careful to make sure to leave the areas where the tabs are going to slide in unglued. There's even one here in the center I'll talk about in a second. Um, and so what I did was I printed the, the pieces like this. Of course, I'm missing a piece. Hang on a second. Um, I printed the pieces like this. With full tabs, so it's fine. Uh, it's too big to slip in the slot because if you uh, had full tabs, there would be nothing holding the center paper down. Uh, so the basic hack is to do this: is to take and cut an amount, usually a half inch, but if that's too much, you figure it out off every single tab. What you're going to do is you're going to friction fit it instead of glue it, and so the cuts end up looking just like this. So this is this one cut down. All right. So now. It tucks in there nice, just like I showed you for the vault. All right, so how do you make the side tabs work? And, and here's another piece with all the hand cuts out. So it leaves you a lot of little pieces of paper. You can do this after you've cut out your model and you've decided you want to make it full flat. Well, my version is to take a copy of the surface of this, just cut it out of white. Uh, you can trace it. Uh, if you're using cut files, just it, you know, about 98% of the size. You want to leave a little area surrounding the idea so that the type can, to, can slip in. Uh, once you have, like I said, you pre-cut out all the cat tabs down, you just literally line it up where it would have glued and you trace around that area with a pen or a pencil. And you do that for all the places that tabs would have attached to this piece. Then when you apply glue, you apply glue everywhere except where those tabs are going to go. You get a nice solid hold by gluing in your center 
like this. This one's already glued in because I've done this construction. So just like I showed you for the vault, you do this. And voila, it tucks in. The reason to make it slightly smaller so that you can catch the tab really easy and tuck it in. Here again uh, is a slit. You can put it not only in the bottom, but you can put it in the side if you have something you want to insert inside and it connects to the inside. It would have glued inside. Uh, this model has a support in the center because it's a long space and that support does some other things. But um, you can just take this complete generalization of how do I create a good slot and make sure I trim my, my, uh, my tabs now. All right, that was the primary purpose of this video, but I'm gonna give you a bonus. Here's a bonus. And the bonus is, you know, since you're gluing in something on the inside anyway, with a little work, often just reversing the texture that's on the front, you can have an interior. Now, David provided an interior with the deluxe version of the set that came, that looks more like an inside if you apply it that way. And, uh, and you glue that in instead. It still glues only in to allow the tabs to fit, friction fit. But now you've got an interior. I did this with another one of David's models, which I'd like to show you right now. The salt box house. This is the bonus. Uh, this is the bonus level. It, doing friction fits, great. In fact, I did the frontier house afterwards. I did not put an interior in. Before, but before that, I came up with this one. Again, the salt house, uh, box house. It's actually a, a seven piece model, four sides, two roof tiles, uh, pieces, and a tile. Uh, I adapted it, I put some slots. Let me get these walls out. Four walls and a little surprise. All right, so assemble, Pr print, print on back, inverted. Pretty simple. Again, I had to trace all the different uh, glue points because this was not originally a fold flat nor did it have an interior uh, model. I'm going to assemble it here for you to show you what the process is like. Slip in there. I'm going to take a little a few seconds to get this thing assembled. I'm not promising you can do it during a, a you know, an encounter. Uh, but certainly, to me, spending two to five minutes assembling the building that's going to be the most important part of my encounter um, is probably interesting. And why did I say that? It's like, well, okay, we can do slots on the side. I don't know if you noticed there were little slots in there. I have little insertable walls. But for now, I'm just going to show you this, which is a floor. This is the third floor. I chose it just because it will demonstrate quickly. And again, there are slots on the side walls. On the interior wall, I put a, a, a slot. Of course, now, now it's going to give me trouble. I'm all Get in there. Of course, this time I run the video through, it's going to give me a little finicky. So anyway, you get the idea. You've now got a wall and a floor. So I, I, if you go to cardboard-warriors.probores.com, in fact, you can look at this all model. I have multiple floors. I have some extra supporting walls. I've divided the uh, the floors into different levels. I have a whole. I have a place for a staircase, and I um, put in a divider in the attic. And of course, the roof goes on. Full thing stores. In fact, this box is bigger than I needed for this one model. But I've got a version of the walls in here. If you really want to go nuts, I made a version of the walls uh, with transparent windows. Uh, you can read more about that on cardboard-warriors.proboards.com. Um, and this is what it takes to store your model. Model stored. Uh, thank you, everyone. I uh, hope to make more videos in the future about my techniques, uh, but I hope you can make five.